Welcome to the Skull King Football Podcast, presented by Fox DFS Firelines. Now, here are your hosts, Justin and Ryan Skullrude. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Skull King Fantasy Football Podcast. Uh, this is your preview for Week Eight. We're going to cover some uh, some news, some player situational starts and sits. Uh, we're going to have our DFS lineups this week, as well as our weekly pick 'em and stick 'em game. Uh, once again, I am your host, Justin Skullrude. With me, as always, the founder of Skull King Football. Uh, my name is Ryan Scullard. It's good to uh, good to talk to you guys again tonight. Uh, so we will jump right in uh, to a little bit of news. Uh, it was reported two days ago, but after we had the uh, the show up, that Ladarius Green will begin practicing uh, on Tuesday, and uh, no reports today that I've seen of of the practice. Um, but do you believe that Ladarius Green is going to be fantasy viable? Or I guess my question is, when do you think that Ladarius Green will be fantasy viable this season, if at all? If at all, it'll be towards the playoffs. Um, we're looking at, you know, he's coming off what was it? it was the ankle and concussion issues is basically combined is what he was dealing with. So we're looking at, you know, we're going into week eight. He's just started practicing. He's just coming off IR, correct? Uh, more or less, yeah. Okay, so if he's just coming off IR, I want to say that they have like a a 21-day window for him to officially be activated once he starts practicing again. Uh, so that gives us still another three weeks total. So 8, 9, and 10 going into week 11. So yeah, you're, you're getting into your playoff push is I think the earliest that he'll really be fantasy viable. Even if he starts before then, I would I would hold off Unless you've got the extra space, I would hold off on him just because you want to make sure that you know you're not using a roster space on nothing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be a while uh, as well because of so much time that he's had off. Uh, I don't think he ever really got up to full pace because in the preseason he was dealing with these injury issues the entire time, and then they decided to put him on the on the pup list. Um, but I think it'll be a few weeks. But I do think. Uh, sooner than fantasy football playoffs, I I would say by week 11 or week 12, he would be someone that you'd want to look at adding. Um, Dante Moncrief did practice today uh, and is expected to play against the Chiefs this week. Do you think he's an auto start? Not yet. I think week um, week nine, he'd be an auto start against Green Bay. Uh, okay. This first week, he's just getting, I think he's just getting his legs back under him. You know, he suffered a broke a broken shoulder blade, which just sounds gross. Just sounds excruciatingly painful. Um, so I think I, I I would be hesitant this week. If you've got him, awesome. If if you have no other choice but to start him, well then yeah, you've got to go ahead. He has touchdown potential. I think he's more of a wide receiver three with touchdown potentials just because of his size. I believe it really boosts uh, Andrew Luck's uh, uh, ability. ability. Uh, so he's he's definitely one to keep an eye on. But for now, I I've got to say that I think that um, I don't think he's an auto start this week. Next week against Green Bay after he's had a week, yes, I'm I'm all over Dante Moncrief. Uh, one, one other person to touch on, do you think this drastically affects Eric Doyle, who currently, uh, in some ways, Doyle. the number, sorry, sorry, uh, who, who's currently the, the rated four tight end on the season. Do you think this once again returns Doyle to his original Doyleness and not the Jack Doyle, or sorry, not the Doyle we've learned, uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, be a good tight end start? I think for now, as long as Dwayne Allen is out, I think that he's still going to be a very viable uh, option because of the fact that him and Dante Moncrief, again, are the only two big bodies for targets down there in the red zone. So I think for now, again, I still think Jack Doyle isn't necessarily quite an auto start. Yes, he's scored the fourth most points in fantasy football right now, but I still don't necessarily see him as an, you know, as an auto start, especially because of, um, 
you know, when you get into some of the matchups that he may be going up against. But, you know, if you got him, he's your only option. Go for it. You know, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, yeah, I think that, again, I think that uh, Dwayne Allen will have more of an effect on, on Jack Doyle than Dante Moncrief will. Uh, Corey Coleman was limited in practice. Matt Jones did not practice today. Uh, but Theo Riddick did return to the practice field for Detroit. Uh, do you feel that this is uh, "quote unquote" bad news for Golden Tate because of his emergence, because of Theoretic going down? Do you think this affects Golden Tate at all? Do you think that Theoretic is back in the offense within the next couple of weeks or possibly next week? Uh, tell me a little bit about the ramifications, really, really briefly, about Detroit situation. Well, with with Theoretic, I think. Uh he indications are that he will be ready to play this week. Uh, I'm not totally confident that he'll be ready to play, but if he can, I don't think it necessarily hurts golden Tate this week. Next, the week after, I think in week nine, the week before their buy, uh, I think will be more if, you know, if he can stay healthy, will be, will have more of an effect on theoretic and how he does, uh, going in, um, and or and have more of an effect on Golden Tate uh, due to how much Theo Riddick can be involved in the offense. So I think for this week, I don't think it affects him too much. They may take it a little bit easy on Riddick's ankle, uh, but I think uh, going going further beyond this, yeah, it'll have more of an effect on Golden Tate. Uh, Bilal Powell did not practice today because of turf toe. Uh, Terrell Williams and Travis Benjamin uh, are not practicing. I'm really hoping that this is just a rest issue. Otherwise, um, I really don't know who, other than Hunter Henry and Antonio Gates, uh, that Philip Rivers is going to throw to, or Melvin Gordon. And by all indications, that's all he's really needed the last couple of weeks. But um, well, they they do have they do have Dontrell Inman, but as far as um, Tyrell Williams goes, the uh, he did as far as we know didn't come out of the game with any injury this last week, so it it very well could be that this is just a rest day for him, just to yeah. keep him fresh because of how tough this matchup uh, is going to be on Sunday against uh, the Denver Broncos. Uh, Jamal Charles was limited once again in practice. Um, this is, I, I believe, going to be a continual story for the next couple of weeks. As long as Spencer Ware is killing it in the running game, and as long as Kansas City is still winning with Spencer Ware as the starter, they're going to, as gingerly as possible, ease Jamal Charles back. Do you see any different ideas with Jamal Charles uh, in the next couple of weeks, Ryan? No, I don't think so. Um, you know, he he only played was it two snaps last? Yeah, two snaps last week. Um, still dealing with with soreness in both knees, uh, not just the one he just had repaired, but he's dealing with soreness in both knees. Um, I don't think that he will play very much if he does. Um, they may again. I think they're just easing him back in. He may you know play five to ten snaps this week instead of only two. But Spencer Ware is still the guy to go with, and against a, a, a mediocre uh, defense in Indianapolis, Spencer Ware should should feast, in my opinion. Uh, Jordan Reed expects to play Sunday in the game in London, uh, back from the concussion protocol. Uh, a little bit of a news uh, subject in that Niall Davis spent extra time over the weekend with his position coach. Do you think that this has any – positive momentum for him to become a viable backup or do you think that Ty Montgomery is going to have it push come to shove nothing's going to change or do you think Niall Davis possibly next week could start to eat into Ty Montgomery and make him a little less of a value play well here's here's the deal last week in this last week's game with Green Bay um Aaron Rodgers threw more passes than any other quarterback in Green Bay history in a single game. So they abandoned, completely abandoned the running game. So as long as Ty Montgomery was back there, they were only going to pass the ball out of the backfield. That was their main, that was mainly what they were going to be doing. So with Niall Davis, uh, it looks like that there's actually going to be um, a specific role for Niall Davis in this game. Um, 
I think that he actually could be used as a running, you know, act, you know, actually used on some running plays. He's going up against Atlanta, who's given up the third most fantasy points uh, to running backs. Um, so he has a, he has a good matchup. Um, he wasn't, I mean, he wasn't expected to play last week. He just he'd had one practice with the team. He had Wednesday practice with the team before playing in the Thursday night game. So you couldn't, I mean, there was no way to expect anything out of Niall Davis there. Um, but coming into this game, I think that he could, you know, he could be used, um, maybe get 10 touches in the game. Niall Davis has never been known as a pass catching back. Um, if I remember, he actually has, you know, his hands are a little bit smaller than most for, um, for uh, catching the ball out of the backfield. That was always, a, always an issue when he was in Kansas City. So his main thing is is actually just running, running the ball. So I think if you know with these with the, an extra week of practice, uh, he should get a few touches. I don't necessarily think that it will produce viability this week for fantasy, but it's a let's see what happens. It's let's see what happens, and then we can reassess next week. Uh, there is a new injury in the saga that is the Russell Wilson injury report. Uh, indications are that he has uh, a right pectoral muscle issue uh, and was limited in practice today, which is notable because he has never been designated as limited in his history of a career ever for practice on the depth chart. He's never been listed as limited in practice. So this to me is more of an indication and more of a worry than his knee injury because it's also his throwing arm. Yeah, he, he couldn't run against Arizona. Now he might not be able to throw against uh, New Orleans, which would be a shame because New Orleans is bleeding on defense. <laughs> the, he's here, here with with Wilson um, his knee injury and his ankle injury didn't he was still practicing fully I think with this game in New Orleans it could just be that he that they're saving him that they actually have decided finally to save him a little bit just because of how beat up he's getting because he can't run his knee no. his 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 knee and his ankle have prevented him from being able to uh, to to get out of the pocket. You know, to do that big spin move that he always does to kind of get away, to look farther down the field, and to pass the ball, which is really what is. Let's be honest, that's what is hurting the Seattle Seahawks offense. the 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 fact that Russell Wilson cannot move around like he usually does, like he has last, like he was able to last year. So, for now, um, yeah, this this is somewhat concerning. Um, as far as DFS goes, I'm fading him. I'm not. I'm not putting Russell. Even with the cake matchup against uh, against New Orleans, this injury has me somewhat worried uh, for Jimmy Graham, Doug Baldwin. Um, it could mean big things for Christine Michael if he can run the ball well. So, but uh, in in terms of of everyone else now, uh, I I I worry and I will I will fade this week on Russell Wilson. Uh, Mike Garofalo reports uh, that uh, C.J. Anderson is out for at least a few weeks with a bone bruise, possibly more, and it's not looking good according to Mike Garofalo's report about C.J. Anderson. I know that uh, I was desperately trying to get Devontae Booker uh, through the waiver wire, uh, was not successful in any league that I tried. Um, and now with this report, it looks like Booker, I know already that he's projected in standard leagues to get 14 points because of the workload that he took and how successful he was this last week. Should people be trying as desperately as possible to get Devontae Booker now that C.J. Anderson is out for a few weeks, possibly more? I don't know what more means, but it's at least a few weeks should people be desperately trying to get C, uh, uh, Booker? I'm desperately trying to get Devontae Booker. <laughs> um, if you're, I mean, if you're, see, here's the problem. I have CJ Anderson in two leagues, and in one of those two leagues, I have a solid running back core behind him. So it's, I mean, yeah, it's a loss, but I, it's a blow that I can take. 
um, because I have I have I have drafted and hit the waiver wire well. In another league, I'm two and five. Have C.J. Anderson and Melvin Gordon as my main two running backs with a bunch of backups behind there, and so I'm hosed. So yeah, if you can get Devontae Booker and really strengthen up your team, if you have the pieces to trade, go ahead and do it. Um, you know, if you could, if you can trade, uh, you know, maybe a, a two for two, maybe a wide receiver and a running back to get a Devontae Booker and a and another, you know, maybe a, a mid level wide or wide receiver two, wide receiver three out of it. Um, I'd go ahead. Like I said, I've got the, uh, I have one league where I'm trying desperately to get Devontae Booker uh, from a guy who has a stacked running back core right now. So, um, yeah, if you can get him, get him. So. Okay, that wraps up our news. Ryan, why don't you head into the the fire lines for DFS this week? All right. So this week, um, again, the way I start every week is by going through my um, my gut checklist, my, my gut instinct, looking at the matchups, looking at the prices, what am I willing to spend, um, who's out there. And so this week... Uh, I, I hate saying this because I love finding those value defenses. Um, but in, in terms of my, you know, gut instinct looking at them, I'm paying up for defense this week. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, Seattle, yeah, they're going to be in New Orleans. Drew Brees passes the snot out of the ball. Um, Seattle's defense went in and kept, you know, Arizona from doing anything. They kept, you know, you look at the total yards that, uh, David Johnson had in that game. He had like 150, but he had a, he had like 40 touches in that game. He was the only one who could do anything. Um, they could not pass the ball. If the Saints try to do that with Mark Ingram, Mark Ingram will fold up and just you know <laughs> hit the hit hit the astroturf and he'll be done. Um, he can't handle 40 touches. So I think Seattle is a good pick. Uh, at eighteen dollars against New Orleans, Denver, another one, eighteen bucks uh, on Yahoo Daily Fantasy against uh, against San Diego. They're really going to want to uh, make up for that loss in San Diego a couple weeks ago. And then Arizona again, eighteen bucks. They're going into Carolina, but Carolina has not played all that well. Um, and so their defense, I think their defense is really stepping it up. And could be a, another solid value to go with. So, uh, those are the three. De- those are the main three defenses in terms of right now. Before any other injuries, before we see anything else, that's where I'm going. If I were to look anywhere else, it would maybe be New England against um, against Buffalo, simply because as as far as we know right now, the uh, Lashawn McCoy is going to be out this week, and it'll probably be Mike Gillisley. Um, running the ball, and so and the New England Patriots are sixteen dollars, so it's not like it's a major value there either. So uh, back to let's so let's go ahead and look at um, quarterbacks. There's a, a lot of a lot of people to like on here. Um, Matt Ryan, he, I mean, paying up forty dollars for Matt Ryan and and putting them together with Julio going up against a decimated Green Bay. You know, defensive backfield is going to be huge for you. Going Aaron Rodgers against Atlanta <laughs> um, in Atlanta. Atlanta gave up so many yards to Phillip Rivers and their wide receiver core, and they are much less talented than what Green Bay has. So if you if you if you can get you know if you can work um, Aaron Rodgers, maybe Randall Cobb and Ty Montgomery. Um, again, Rodgers is only thirty seven. Ty Montgomery, I want to say, is only fifteen dollars still. Don't ask me. I mean, some of some of Yahoo's. Um, this is where you can take care, take advantage of Yahoo's um, pricing structure with guys like Ty Montgomery, who we know are going to be hugely used and are only fifteen bucks. Um, so I, I, you know, take advantage of that. You know, maybe tie those two together. Um, going down a little bit farther, Jameis Winston. Going up against an Oakland defense that gives up, you know, gives up a ton of yards. He's thirty-five dollars if you can put him together with Evans, who Evans is pushing close to being the number one wide receiver in football right now, um, in terms of fantasy points at least. 
So if you can, you know, at thirty-five dollars for Winston, thirty-eight for Evans, that would be a great stack for you. Derek Carr again going up against Tampa Bay, who they're also giving up the yards. You know, Derek Carr is going to be thirty-four dollars. Then if you're looking for a little bit of value. Um, I've got on my list, I've got Trevor Simeon going up against San Diego's defense because, again, San Diego's defense is kind of back and forth. Um, it's going to be in Denver, so that'll help out Simeon. And then, you know, the guy who just got his job back, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, I will stream anyone going up against Cleveland. So, um, and I think that if you could package or, or stack Fitzpatrick for 26 bucks. And Marshall for 31 against a, a hapless Cleveland pass defense, uh, you know that could be that could be really big for your lineups, uh, especially in a in a in a GPP lineup. So, if we're looking at tight ends, I didn't see a you know I don't like a lot of the um, matchups that are going on. Um, a lot of people are yeah they're going to go with your you know your Gronkowski's your Greg Olson's those are going to be highly owned. Um, I'm hesitant on Hunter Henry against Denver simply because he's still dealing with the concussion, so we don't know for sure. Um, you know, I talked. We talked early about the uh, the Wilson injury and how that could affect guys. I still think that Jimmy Graham, again, as long as Wilson, you know, plays at this point, Jimmy Graham could be a very big. I could have a very big game against his former team that traded him away. Um, he's twenty-two dollars, so he's the highest pay, He's the highest value tight end I have uh, for Yahoo. Uh, so he's he's a guy that I would I would be willing to to use um, simply because even you know even with a, a not so great week last week. Um, let me get his game log. Um, he was he was still targeted ten times and had five receptions for fifty-three yards. So. He's getting the targets. If you look at the last the last four weeks alone, nine targets, eight targets, nine targets, ten targets. Wilson's looking his way, and so he is going to he is going to continue to look his way. The New Orleans defense bleeds, you know. They just they basically just kind of, you know, just let it all flow out. And yeah, he you know whoever wants points take points. <laughs> um, so Jimmy Graham's going to be a, a good one to pick. Uh, Cameron Brait, he's back and forth. I think he has an he has an okay matchup against Oakland again because Oakland just isn't all that great. So I think he would be a good streamer candidate. Um, he's one again if you want to maybe double stack uh, Winston Brait and uh, and uh, Evans. You know that may be a good way to go. Um, my other ones, you know, Kyle Rudolph against uh, the Chicago defense, as always. Um, Sam Bradford loves looking his way. Jack Doyle is only sixteen bucks. The number four tight end in fantasy right now is only sixteen dollars. He's considered still a major value, so he's one that I would I would love to put in my lineups. And then we talked we've been talking about this guy over and over and over again. But you talk about a cake matchup this week. CJ Fedorowitz in Houston going up against the hapless Detroit defense who has given up the, I want to say the third most, third or second most points to tight ends. Put CJ Fedorowicz in your DFS lineups. Do it, do it, do it. He is only $12. He will save you a bunch of, a bunch of cap space uh, for, uh, for the rest of your players. All right, going to the running backs. Again, I, uh, I was looking. I don't like a lot of the, the high price pays here, the high price looks. David Johnson, I mean, what can you, what else can you say about David Johnson and Ezekiel Elliott other than the fact that they keep performing, period. They do. I just don't like to pay, I don't like to pay that much for them. You know, $42 and $38 for those two. I'd rather take a little bit off, go with Christine Michael of Seattle going against New Orleans. Again, New Orleans defense can't stop anyone at all doing anything. So if you can go Christine Michael, um, on the, you know, the guy runs like a bat out of hell. Um, like he's shot from a cannon as, as, as Pete Carroll always says. So playing on the, on the AstroTurf in the dome, I think he can have a really good game. He's only $32. So it's a little, a little bit more of a value. Spencer Ware he is the offense right now in, uh, in Kansas city. So, you know, if you can go to Spencer Ware, I think that would be a, 
you know, against Indianapolis. He is going to be heavily utilized. Going back to that Houston and Detroit matchup, Lamar Miller is only $27. I think, uh, you know, there could still be people sitting on him with the fact that he had that little bit of a shoulder injury. He still managed to play through that shoulder injury against, uh, against Denver. So I have no problem playing Lamar Miller. Now, if Lamar Miller is out and they decide to, to, you know, it looks like he's going doubtful. Alfred Blue is only $10 and he'll be able to run on that Detroit defense. Uh, Jaquiz Rogers is, has just been a thing of beauty to be completely honest. Um, in the last two weeks that he has been the lead dog, 15.4 points on, on Yahoo and 16.8 points on Yahoo. Um, totaling what? 163 yards and 129 yards in two games. So, you know, at 26 bucks, he would be a good value to play. Uh, Devonte Freeman. Now, everyone talks about how the, the fact that Green Bay is tough on running backs. They're tough on running running backs, but they give up a ton of points to, to pass catching backs, which may be how they utilize Devonta Freeman more. And since he is the only running back now with Tevin Coleman out for a little bit, um, Devonta Freeman is going to be a good value at 26. Moving down, you know, James White at $19 is going to be a good value. Theoretic, if he's available, if he's available at 18, could be a good value for you as well. If it turns out that um, LaShawn McCoy is out, Mike Gillisley is only $17. He's, he would be a value play against New England. Uh, New England still gives up, I want to say, you know, they're giving up almost 100 yards a game on the ground, so Gillisley could be a way to go. And then, you know, again, with C.J. Anderson out, Devontae Booker is only $14. Now, it may be that you use him as a value play in, like, your cash games because he's going to have a low, uh, a very high floor with how much work he's going to get as being the, the only back in the backfield. He very well could be highly owned in GPPs in your tournament matchup simply because everyone knows that C.J. Anderson is going to be out. He's a value He's going to be used, so I think it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily hurt you to play him because of how many points he could get and save you on cap space. So now, uh, finally, going into the wide receivers, we already talked about you know Julio's Julio's going to eat against the Green Bay defense. Evans is going to eat against the Oakland defense. T. Y. Hilton should play pretty well again. They're at home, so um, Andrew Luck's going to be throwing around the ball. Hilton's been getting ten targets a game. Uh, so, you know, he's, he's going to be, he's, he should be good for you at $34. Uh, moving down, I think this may finally be the game for DeAndre Hopkins. He's 29 bucks, so he's a little bit, he's more, more of a value than he has been all season. And again, going up against that Detroit defense, this could be the game that Osweiler finally shows something, maybe. <laughs> And, Hop- and, and Hopkins could be the uh, beneficiary of that. Terrell Pryor, I really like Terrell Pryor, especially if, because, again, they're going up against New- the New York Jets. They'll be in Cleveland for this game. The Jets' defense has not been able to stop anyone in the past game. Terrell Pryor has proven that he can get the job done no matter what. Um, he's still a little bit limited with his hamstring in practice, but uh, I think that, you know he's still gonna he's still gonna get the work, um, as long as he's out there. I think that he's he's a, a guy to look. And you know, he's maybe a guy that you put in because of the fact that he you know people lay off of him with the hamstring itch, issue. So, um, working down, you know, Randall Cobb again. He'll eat against that Atlanta defense. Devonte Adams, sixteen targets last week. Sixteen targets for Devonte Adams. I think that he is a guy, if you're in season long, trade him. See what you can get out of him. Um, in terms of DFS, I think he's got one more good week. Um, a lot of people may be on him chasing points from last week. But, he, again, he's got such a great matchup against the Atlanta defense. He may be a good play. Cole Beasley's finally back after the, uh, after the, uh, the bye week. Um, a great PPR target, uh, $19. And then looking at a couple other guys, uh, Ty Montgomery, again, only 15 bucks. People may be all over him simply because of the value. 
knowing that he's going to be highly involved. Um, and then two other guys I wanted to mention. Corderell Patterson, who's been getting more and more involved in the Minnesota in Minnesota offense, has two consecutive weeks with a touchdown, is only $12. He could be a good tournament play flyer to put in there. Um, and then finally, J.J. Nelson, um, who is only 10 bucks. The Carolina defense has been giving up a whole lot of pass yards, a whole lot in, in the defensive backfield. John Brown has not been completely healthy because the sickle cell trait that has kind of affected, um, given him pain in his legs. But, and with Jerron, and with Jerron Brown now out with a torn ACL, who is, I believe, in front of Nelson. Now that Nelson, I think that Nelson could be in for an even larger role. Uh, Michael Floyd's been basically, you know, invisible because he can't keep, he can't catch the ball. Um, yeah, he had the, the, the I want to say, a couple of big catches towards the end of the game um, in the game against Seattle. But for the most part, he has not been able to hold on to the ball. He's had a, he had a big drop to basically sputter out their drive in, the, in, the, in overtime. So I think J.J. Nelson gets more involved. He's another one of those speed guys like, like John Brown. And against that, uh, Carolina defense could, uh, could really uh, – blow it up for you so that's uh my main looks for uh dfs this week again this is off of my first gut instinct list so this is what i'm looking at from the beginning before i do any major research just look at the guy look at the matchup don't research it but just look at who they're playing against create your list after that if there's injuries if there's, uh, if there's some, some other mitigating circumstances you can add to the list, you can take off the list. Cross guys off, add guys on. Um, once you do that, then you can really get a, a solid feel for how uh, – then you can really dig into uh, the research. Um, you know, get onto SkullKingFootball.com, uh, get into our premium rankings and, um, and projections to really see where guys are supposed to, you know, could finish up, and, uh, and that can really help you uh, – you know, get your lineups uh, set for uh, Sunday morning. So, all right, that's all I've got. Uh, let's take it back to you, Justin. Okay, so we are going to get into a little bit of some mailbag questions, uh, some starts and sits, some trade requests or, or trade advice requests. And so we'll, we'll start with the first one. It's uh, from an individual who is trying to figure out who to start at the running back position. Uh, do you start Ryan Matthews? Robert Kelly. I know that uh, Ryan Matthews has had some fumbling issues and Wendell Smallwood may be getting more carries. Robert Kelly um, may be getting more um, carries with the fumbling issues uh, that are there at Washington. Ryan, who would you start uh, this week in standard or PPR? doesn't matter. If, if I had to, and I don't like – I, here's the problem. I don't like Ryan Matthews' matchup. He's going up against Dallas, who has given up the third least amount of fantasy points to running backs. Um, in terms of Robert Kelly, I don't necessarily like that one either, simply because when he... <sighs> It, it all depends on Matt Jones. Really, it all depends on Matt Jones. If Matt Jones can't play, I guess you could go Robert Kelly. Um, but I think that Chris Thompson is gonna will be more involved. They have the, if I remember right, they're the London game against Cincinnati. Um, so I, I don't like either option. If I had to choose... Uh, Wait till wait to see if Matt Jones. If Matt Jones, if if Matt Jones is uh, is healthy to play, go Ryan Matthews. If Matt Jones is not, go Robert Kelly. Uh, that's exactly how I would have put it. Um, I believe that that Jones still until declared no longer the starter, or or Robert Kelly is declared to be getting more carries. I know they've mentioned more carries, but until they have shown in a game that Robert Kelly is going to be more viable, I still go with Ryan Matthews, even with the fumbling issues. Uh, second question uh, is in a PPR, one-point PPR format. Uh, the individual is wanting to know 
whether or not they should drop Kobe Fleener this week and pick up Gary Barnage. Uh, Kobe Fleener obviously playing the Seahawks, and Barnage is playing the Jets. Uh, I am, am slightly faced with this one in the fact that I do have Kobe Fleener, and I'm looking for a different option at tight end. I'm not dropping Fleener uh, because I think that the continual – Chemistry grows over the season, but I would definitely look at someone else uh, for Fleener this week. If you've got to drop him, I would avoid it at almost all costs, in my opinion. But Ryan, wh- who do you think? What do you think should go down in this situation? Well, Gary, as of right now, Gary Barnage is the number was it number eight, number nine tight end. Kobe Fleener is uh, looks like number thirteen um, in one, this and this full point PPR, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. So I think I, – I honestly think it gets, it's – he's – yeah, Fleener has a horrible matchup against Seattle. Um, but Seattle has been known to, to bleed to tight ends. To bleed to tight ends. They, they have. Um, they have – they had some communication issues against um, Atlanta. Horrible communications last year against Carolina. Yeah. So – I mean, if I wouldn't drop Fleener, I would leave him there for. Uh, I would, you know, if you can hold on to him, hold on to him. Uh, you've, I think they're better match. If Gary Barnage is available, yeah, I think he's a good. He's a good. He's he'd be a good guy to go against um, the New York Jets, especially if Josh McCown is back again. You know, watch to see if McCown can play. I'm not holding my breath, but it's a possibility. So. Um, you know, watch for McCown if he can if he can play. Yeah, Gary Barnage would be a way to go. Um, looking at other guys who might be available, Cameron Brait again. Cameron Brait has a good um, has a good matchup. Um, Jacob Tammy has a good matchup. So I would say I would say if you if you have to drop Kobe Fleener to get Gary Barnage play Kobe Fleener. If you have the room to pick up Gary Barnage, then drop someone else to pick up Gary Barnage. That's the way I would go with it. Okay. Uh, this next question is in a standard league format. Who wins the trade? Jordy Nelson or Michael Thomas? Michael Thomas. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Until, I mean, yes, uh, I think people are going to be holding on to, to Jordy Nelson a little bit longer. Uh, because of the uh, volume that's going to happen over the next couple of weeks until uh, Starks comes back and, and can give Green Bay a run game again. Um, I, I just I don't see it. Jordy Nelson, there's something off. Um, Devontae Adams, uh, it's more than just a one-week thing. He's had five touchdowns on the season. Um, yeah, I would go with Michael Thomas. He's he's clearly right now the number two receiver. Nelson is three or four for Green Bay. Yeah, I think I think that Nelson. I don't think Nelson's ever f- has really fully come back, gotten his speed back or anything from uh, uh, from the the ACL surgery this last season. So, um, yeah, I would I would take Michael Thomas. He has been heavily involved. He's basically taken over that that slot role. Um, and just run with it. He has by far been the most productive rookie uh, wide receiver so far. Okay, and uh, quarterback uh, question. Uh, Andy Dalton versus Washington or Marcus Mariota versus the Jaguars? Who do you start? Ooh. Washington's, Washington's defense has been all right against the pass. Um, not great. Let me... Uh, let me pull these two guys up real quick since this is this question was a little bit of a surprise to me. While you're doing that, I'll, I'll give my answer. I go with Andy Dalton this week against Washington. Though Washington is showing improvement in the defense, um, the Jaguars uh, played much better on defense. The offense is really the only issue uh, for the Jaguars, and it's the offense getting the defense into trouble. So I would go with Andy Dalton this week. Um, look for him to make a connection uh, with Brandon LaFell like he's done the last couple of weeks. Uh, and so I would go with Andy Dalton because I think Andy Dalton will get 250 and two touchdowns. Marcus Mariota, I don't know if I see that. Um, 
coming against the Jaguars defense. I can see it against the Jaguars defense. Um, the Jags defense has given up um, the 17th most fantasy points to the quarterback. So, I mean, they're about to mail the pack. The, uh, the Washington defense is, no, is ranked number eight in terms of giving up points to the defense. So they've, they've been doing a lot better. Marcus Mariota has the ability to run more, and so I think he can get more points going that way. He could still throw for you know 200, 200 yards and a couple of TDs against um, against that Jacksonville defense, where Dalton could have some Dalton could have some trouble. It kind of depends on how their defensive line, if their defensive line can really get to him. If not, that could leave plenty of time for AJ Green to get open, and believe it or not, Brandon LaFell to get open. So. Uh, next question comes uh, as just a straight up uh, individuals asking uh, who is better rest of season of the Minnesota Vikings wide receivers, Cordell Patterson or Stefan Diggs? Has Stefan Diggs really gotten fully healthy yet? Mm, no, not really. That's the, and seeing that's, that's the issue. Um, looking here. Oh, man. Man, Chicago has given up the most points to wide receivers this season. Ay, ay, ay. So he's got it. I mean, Stephen Diggs has a good matchup. He's not getting targeted. I mean, 9, 11, 7, 7. This last week, he only had five targets for two catches. Philadelphia is actually playing some decent defense. Um, I don't know. He's kind of a – Diggs is kind of a uh, – an iffy player right now, just because he hasn't been able to stay healthy. He, you know, he hasn't been able to get healthy. Patterson has been a bit of a revelation just the last couple of weeks, and it's it's a matter of trying to figure out is this for real. Um, he's had three straight games because they had the week six bye, so playing week four, week five, and week seven, six targets, six targets, and seven targets. They're finding ways to get him involved. Um, he's not getting a whole lot of yards, five catches for 38, four for 39, seven for 67. But his usage in terms of just playing getting targets um, is, is up there. Ugh. If you have Stefan Diggs, I wouldn't drop him for Cordero Patterson. Um, Cordero Patterson is a, is a hold just in case, or is a, is a maybe pick up as a flyer to see if he can keep going, keep, keep this going if the the Minnesota offense can keep him involved if your league has return yards get, go ahead and go with Cordero Patterson simply because he's going to get those returns I believe he's I know he's the kick returner I'm not sure if he's a punt returner as well yeah I'm not I believe he is um, but once again I, I'm not 100% sure uh, I I rarely factor in return yards because uh, most leagues don't even do it. Uh, I mean, if they get the touchdown, great. But um, I'm not banking on uh, a player getting a return touchdown as part of the game plan. Um, uh, this next question comes in uh, as uh, a start question. Uh, they have Crystal Michael, Matt Forte, and Jaquiz Rogers, but they can only start two because of their uh, wide receiver depth. Which two running backs of those three do you start this week? Christian Michael going up against New Orleans, Matt Forte against Cleveland, and Jaquiz Rogers against Oakland. I like Jaquiz against Oakland. Um, it's kind of a toss-up between the two. I, I mean, Bilal Powell has has a turf toe issue that could linger for a couple of weeks, meaning that Matt Forte will probably be the the workhorse. Um, the Cleveland defense has actually done a pretty decent job of stopping up the run. Not great, but has done a decent job of stopping up the run. Um, and yet they're still giving up the seventh most fantasy points to running backs. They're not giving up the yards, they're giving up the TDs. <laughs> um, which Matt Forte has been getting the opportunities. He's still, you know, he's still projected to be, uh, you know, have a ton of, a ton of work. Um, I think that probably Forte, Kristen Michael, may be a little bit dependent on how mobile Russell Wilson will be. 
And so because we, we know that Russell Wilson's having some struggle with, some struggles with his mobility, I'd unfortunately probably have to say uh, Matt Forte. Uh, yeah, for as much shade as we have thrown Matt Forte this year, uh, he and will continue to throw the rest of the year. And, and will conti- but to me, you play your players who are playing Cleveland. That's, that's my philosophy the rest of the season. And I think um, because the Jets will be ahead by multiple scores, they're going to finish the game running the ball. And I think that's just good news for Forte. Um, with uh, the Seahawks injury issues, if, if they can't effectively throw the ball, Kristen Michael is going to have a stacked box to work against. Yep. Jaquiz Rogers, they're doing uh, very, very well mixing in the pass and the run. Jaquiz Rogers is the auto, in my opinion. I would go with Matt Forte because he's playing Cleveland. Yep. Moving forward, I'd probably go with Kristen Michael, uh, but Matt Forte definitely this week. Okay. Yep. That wraps us up for our mailbag questions. We're going to get into our pick 'em, stick 'em really quickly uh, before we wrap up the show. Uh, this week, uh, or this last week, you evened up the score with a 4 1 uh, pummeling of me. Yes. And so it is 10 to 10. So because it's tied, I'll have you go first this week in hopes that uh, the one that picks first always loses. Um, <laughs> That's actually the way it's gone so far. Pretty much how it's kind of gone. Uh, I just had a. a Uh, a big week one. Um, But uh, Alex Smith, uh, our quarterbacks are Alex Smith versus Indianapolis, Brock Osweiler versus Detroit. Uh, Wide receivers are Muhammad Sanu versus Green Bay and Quincy Inunua versus Cleveland. Matt Asiata versus Chicago and uh, Mike Gillisley versus New England. Uh, Cameron Brait versus Oakland and Charles Clay versus New England. And wrapping up with the defenses, we have the Oakland Defense versus Tampa Bay, and a Detroit defense versus Houston. Who are you going to pick first, Ryan? <laughs> I actually like some of these. There's a couple of them that I like. Again, just to kind of again go over the rules for some of these people. The way that we the we way that we set it this game is you have to pick two from each position that are owned in less than fifty percent of Yahoo leagues because that's our main our main platform that we play on. Um, we use a one point PPR. That's what we've been doing. One point PPR for the scoring and, uh, both players are averaged both or projected to get the same projected pretty close to the pretty same. Cool. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go with Mike Gillisley of new England or going up against of Buffalo going up against new England. Um, and I'm going to stick you with Matt Asiata against Chicago simply because we don't even know if Jarek McKinnon, we don't know for sure if Jarek McKinnon's going to play. We don't know if LaShawn McCoy's going to play. We don't know for, no. <laughs> but I, as of right now, it's looking more like McKinnon will and McCoy won't. So, Yeah, I was banking on that last week in picking up Mike Gillisley. Um, and it didn't really matter. Neither McCoy or Gillespie scored any points. Um, but uh, my pick, mostly because, uh, and I never like having my defense be the first pick, um, but I'm going to pick Oakland versus Tampa Bay just because I don't want any part of Detroit's defense right now. Uh, they are uh, not very good. They're not really getting turnovers. Um, they're not scoring good defensive points, and they're just giving up points at will. So I'm going to go with Oakland. Um, Oakland's playing a little bit better. Um, I really don't like Oakland's matchup against uh, Mike Evans. I don't think their corners can stop him. So uh, I'm hoping – I mean, once again, both of these defenses are not peop- are not defenses that I would stream by any – a stretch of the imagination, but I think Oakland will do slightly better than Detroit. I'm actually okay with this because I was actually going, if I had to choose, I was actually going to go Detroit against Houston because I trust Jameis Winston to put up points a whole lot more than I trust uh, Brock Osweiler. So So does that uh, lead us to your quarterback selection then? Oh... I don't know. <laughs> um, because the mm, 
the tight ends are interesting. The wide receivers are okay. The wide receivers are blah. I don't like either one. So yeah. I liked Quincy Nunwa earlier in the year, but he just you know he he has not stepped up in in uh, in Eric Decker's absence like everyone was expecting him to. So I think I am going to go with. the tight ends and I'm going to pick Cameron Brait. Um, I like Cameron Brait over Charles Clay. Uh, Charles Clay, even with the, everyone being all the wide receivers being down in, in, uh, in Buffalo, he still only got two catches last week. So I'm, you know, I think they'll, if they're going to have any success, they need to run the ball against new England. It's going to be at home. Tyrod Taylor is doing more of the running, you know, than he is passing. So I'm okay with uh, with taking Cameron Braid against Oakland. I think that he's kind of a back and forth. I think the matchup plays well for him this week. Uh, hmm. I was thinking about doubling down with uh, Brock Osweiler, uh, but uh, really quickly, I took a quick look at Brock Osweiler. And uh, outside of the Denver game where he threw the ball 41 attempts, uh, he has yet to have a game where he didn't throw an interception. So I'm going to go with Alex Smith uh, versus <laughs> All right. Well, and, and here's the deal. I don't know if – oh, we didn't mention this. I uh, heard, actually heard this on another podcast. Um, Alex Smith is on pace for 4,000 passing yards. Yeah. That was insane. Uh, which is which is which is more than he's ever had in his career. And at this and at this rate, Jeremy Macklin will still not have a thousand yards. Even with Alex Smith throwing for a thousand yards at this current pace, Macklin will not finish with a thousand yards. Yeah. I, I don't know what to say, because to me, Alex Smith, if you were to if you were to list the top twenty quarterbacks in the league and their and then pick them in order of who's going to get 4,000 yards. Alex Smith would have been my last pick. He would have been one of the last ones for me too. Yeah. I, I just – it has been – and what's, what's crazy is though he's on pace for 4,000 yards, he hasn't had – other than week one, he hasn't had a game above 200 and like 90 yards. I'm looking well, the, at – The very first week he had 363. Yeah. Outside of the first week, he had 363, and then it's been 186, 237, 224, 214, 287. Yeah, so, and, and I want to say like 100 of those yards went to Spencer Ware in that first game. So. Yeah. Well, about 100 yards went to Spencer Ware in the last game. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, kind of dig into, especially if you're getting into DFS, um, to dig into where – if if Alex Smith is on pace for four thousand yards, where are those yards? Who is getting those yards? Who are the beneficiaries? So, so yeah, that's that's definitely something to look at. So, uh, did you pick a receiver? No, it's down to me. Um, and I I don't like either one of these guys, but I if I had to pick, I would go with Mohamed Sanu against the Green Bay defense. That's who I would have picked. Yeah. So you get stuck with Quincy Anunua. Well. If if my feeling on a roster is any indication of how well it will be, I don't like these picks. I like yours a little bit better, um, but last time that happened, uh, I went four and one. So um, <laughs> once it came to wrap this up, uh, my roster for this weekend in the pick 'em and stick 'em is Alex Smith, Quincy and Nunwa, Matt Asiata, Charles Clay, and Oakland. Uh, versus Tampa Bay. You have Brock Osweiler, Muhammad Sanu, uh, Mike Gillisley, Cameron Brait, and Detroit defense versus Houston. Uh, is there anything else that we would like to add into this episode today, Ryan? No, I think that's about it. Uh, you know, have you know, have fun this week, guys. Make sure that uh, make sure that you uh, get your research done, especially for DFS. You know, make sure you uh, you go over. Make sure you check. Uh, to check uh, Saturday, check all your uh, check all the uh, the injuries. Make sure you've got everything set, ready to go. Um, make sure you do it Saturday night, especially if you have anyone on Washington or Cincinnati, since their game starts at six thirty in the morning. 
uh, on the West Coast, 9.30 in the morning on the East Coast, playing, uh, playing in Wembley Stadium in London. So, Well, we want to thank you for listening. Uh, the true reason for our show is our listeners. Once again, thank you for joining us. This has been the School King Fantasy Football Podcast brought to you by Vox DFS and Vox DFS Firelines at VoxDFS.com. Uh, I have been your host, Justin Skullrude. And I'm Ryan Skullrude. Good luck in week eight, guys. All right, we'll talk to you later.